Welcome to your Raspberry Pi game system. The items shown here are the items that you're going to receive inside of the package. So it looks like a Nintendo cartridge, but it's not. This is your game system itself. It's going to hook up to the back of your TV with your HDMI and also a USB power source. Also included is an instruction manual and the tutorial DVD video which you're watching right now. I also include a brand new controller which is an iNext brand and it's USB. The emulators and ROM files that I'll include for you with this device are freeware software that anybody can obtain. You're paying me for the parts and labor to put it together and the games are included at no cost. So hooking up the system is going to be really simple for you. There's really nothing to it at all. Uh, so you take your system here and uh, there's two cords attached to it. One of them is an HDMI cable and then one of them is a USB cord. Now this USB is your power cord and you're going to plug that in last. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug in your HDMI cable. Hooks up into the back of your TV. It's very simple. Then you're going to take your controller here. Your controller is going to hook up. It has a USB on it. It's going to hook right into the very bottom of your system. There is a little slot there for your controller to hook up to. It's very easy. Now if you have a um, two-player adapter kit, then you're going to hook up the little adapter in here. Instead of hooking up your controller, you're going to put the little adapter in it. Then you're going to put in your uh, USB hub. That's going to allow you to plug two controllers into that. Um, but otherwise, you're going to hook controller into here, HDMI into the back of your TV, and then you're going to hook in your USB cord that's going to go into your power source on the back of your TV set, and the system's going to start booting up for you. That's all there is to it. You're all hooked up and you're ready to go. So the system itself is a one-player system. However, you can make it two-player. You'll need to purchase this Raspberry Pi two-player accessory kit. Included in the accessory kit, for a low price of $20, is another iNex controller brand new, the adapter that you need to hook into the system to allow you to hook in the USB hub, which is also included. The USB hub is going to allow you to hook in more than one controller at a time. So booting up the system is relatively simple. Once you get everything hooked up, uh, you're going to get this screen right here. There's going to be a bunch of letters and words that are scrolling on the left side of the screen. That's completely normal. That's what you want to see. As long as you see a bunch of green OK symbols there next to the uh, each little set of words, you're in good shape. My logo will come up after that. It'll go back to the green lettering. This all takes about a minute for it to, to process and load up. It's just like a computer. It's just booting up. Uh, emulation station is loading. This is the last screen you're going to see before we're ready to play the game system. So you just got to be patient with it. Like I say, it takes about a minute for it to boot up. Just give it some time. Let it do its thing. And it'll be ready to go shortly. We're going to talk about uh, configuring your controller. So when you um, buy this machine and you get it home, I've already configured the controller for you, so you shouldn't have to do that. But if you ever buy a new controller, um, you're getting a different, or you ever get a different controller, or hook a different kind of controller up to it, you're going to have to configure that controller. Now, when you um, boot the system up with that controller plugged into it, it's going to automatically come up with this screen. But uh, you can also configure an input which means you're going to um, configure your controller at any time and you can do that just by pressing your start button uh, and then you can go down to configure input configuring input means you're going to configure your controller your controller is your input uh, so and then we're going to press yes to configure input it should say configure input one gamepad detected if it does not say one gamepad detected or zero gamepads detected uh, then you, you might have an issue with it seeing your, your controller. It might not recognize the controller you're trying to use. 
uh, as long as you see that right there that says one game pad detected we're ready to configure this input and we're going to do that by holding down any button on the device just for a couple seconds and then letting it go now when we're on the configure screen what we're going to do is we're going to press on our d-pad we're going to press our up button down left and right we're going to press our start button and our select button. We're going to set our buttons to any configuration we would like. If we don't have A, B, X, and Y, maybe you have um, numbers or letters or squares or whatever that's not A, B, X, and Y, you can set it any way you would like it. But I like to use the normal configuration set up here um, on, the, on the controller I give you. You're just going to press your buttons as, they're, as they say right there is going to be a b x and y you're going to press your left shoulder button and your right shoulder button now you don't have a trigger you don't have a, a second button up top so um, we're going to skip these and for the rest of this whole list here you don't have any of those buttons since we don't have a ps3 controller or a 360 controller hooked up to it you only have the buttons that we just configured and that's it so we need to skip through the rest of them and the way we're going to do that is we're going to hold in our b button or any button, hold it down just for a couple seconds and then let go of it. It skips past that selection. Then you can go down to the next one. So we're going to push a button, hold it in for two seconds, let it go, push a button, two seconds, let it go, and so on and so forth, all the way down through the whole screen. Left analogs we don't have, right analogs we don't have, so we don't have to set any of those up. So now when we get down to the bottom, we get down to this thing called hotkey enable. And we're gonna we're gonna skip past this too. We do not need to en enable a hotkey. Um, what, that, what that's gonna do is allow you to um, back out of the game. Uh, we don't wanna set that up because with this controller, we're just gonna use our start and select button together to back out of the controller. So we're gonna skip this setup just the same way we skipped before. We're gonna press the button, hold it down for a couple seconds and let it go. Then we're gonna press okay. It's going to say you did not choose a hotkey. We realize that. That's no problem at all. So we're going to press in our A button for about three seconds. And then let it go. And then give the, the system a couple seconds to recognize what it's doing here. And we're ready to go. Then all you have to do is press your start button to get out of your main screen. And now we're ready to play the game. So I want to talk a little bit about controller options for this device. What's included is a Super Nintendo-like controller that's made by iNext. And that, to me, seems to work the best because you have enough buttons to operate any game that, that you have on the system. However, there are many other options. If you prefer to play Atari games with a joystick, you can get an Atari joystick with a USB that will hook right up to the system. But you can also get an N64 controller, a PS3 controller, a 360 controller, even Sega Genesis or Nintendo GameCube controllers that have a USB option as the plug-in for the end of the controller. As long as you get a USB wired controller, it'll hook right up to the device. What you cannot do is use a wireless controller that has a cord connected to it because it still will not register on the Raspberry Pi itself. It has to be a hardwired controller. As long as the controller is hardwired and USB, it should work for the device. Now with that being said, some of the controllers, some of the cheaper knockoff controllers from China and other places will not work on the Raspberry Pi. Do not go to GameStop and buy any of the at-home products. Any of the at-home controllers that I have tried will not even hook up to the device at all for some reason. So do not try the ones at GameStop that are the at-home brand controllers. Uh, any other controllers that are decent and feel decent for you should work properly. Like I say, there is a wide variety on the internet that you can choose from. Try getting them off of Amazon or eBay. That seems to be the best way to get them for a reasonable price. And you'll have a wide variety of options out there for you. So the navigation on this system is, is pretty simple. It's easy to understand. You probably don't even need me to tell you this, but you know, you just push over to go over, 
up and down they go up and down it's pretty simple just on your d-pad you're just going to press your over buttons that's going to choose your platform whichever platform you want to choose it gets us somewhere you want to go see i want to play some sega master games you're going to press your a button your a button is advance your a button is your action button and your b button is uh for back to back out of where you just were uh, a button goes forward b button goes back um on on these games too you can just go up and down with your with your d-pad but if you want to go a lot faster you can use your right bumper or your left bumper and that'll go down the screen very fast or up the screen very fast so that's going to be a lot better on on um platforms that have a lot of uh games on them so that may be helpful to you um it's very simple to choose the game you're just going to press your a button to select it um, if you want to get out of the games, you're going to press your start and select button together um, and that's going to back you right out of the game to the last menu that you were on. B button to go back, A button to go forward. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to press your select button plus your start button together to get out of the current game you're playing. Remember that your B button goes backwards and your A button is forward or your action button. So now I'm going to tell you the coolest thing about this device and that is the fact that you can save any game at any point within the game. So as you probably remember a lot of the old school games like all the Nintendo, the original NES games, there was no save. You could not save the games. There was no way to do it. So you would leave your system on all day while you went to school and hope that it was still on when you came home and then you could finish playing the rest of your game. If it ever got shut off, you just lost all of your progress. It's kind of the same situation now with the only exception being that you can create a save state and you can get as far as you want to go in the game right before, say like right before you know a boss stage is coming up or something's going to get you. And then you're going to create yourself a save state. The way you're going to do that is you're going to press your right bumper and your select button at the same exact time. Right bumper and select. That creates a save state. When you do that, you can see on the bottom left hand side of your uh, television set, it's going to tell you in little yellow letters that you created the save state. Right bumper and select creates a save state. Now when you go a little bit further in the game, and you get past the point to where you thought you couldn't get past and you want to create another save state or if you get to a point where you think you're about to die or you do die you can very quickly enact that last state of, of save the, the last place that you were by pressing your left bumper and your select it takes you right back to where you were you see what I mean so you can go as far as you want you can go here to where you get hit and go back to where you were. It's the same point in time. That's going to save you a lot of trouble. Until you get to the point to where you get past that stage, you get past that point, and you feel like you've accomplished something, then you can create another save state. What you're going to have to be careful about is not creating save states over top of other save states or creating a save state when you meant to enact a save state. So you're just going to have to get used to creating a save state and enacting a save state. And then you'll be able to just run right past games that you've never been able to get past before. So right bumper and select creates a save state. Left bumper and select enacts the save state. So as long as you can get that down and you can figure that out, it's going to be a lot of fun. So when troubleshooting this device, just make sure that your cables are plugged in correctly. That's the biggest thing with it. Make sure your HDMI is plugged in. Make sure your power cord is plugged in. Um, to check and see if you're getting power, uh, check the, um, the game itself. And if there's a little green light flashing, then you know you're getting power to the device. As long as you're getting power to it. Um, considering all the cables are really intact inside of the device itself and they're, they're not going to pull out. Um, check and make sure that your HDMI is on the right setting on your TV or it's plugged into the back of your TV really good. 
there is a possibility that HDMI ports on the back of the TV could go bad, or uh, uh, even the USB ports can go bad on a TV. So um, if you need to use a different USB port for your power, you can always buy one of those little um, USB blocks. Uh, don't use your cell phone blocks. They're, they can be different voltages than what you need. You require with this system between 1.5 amp and, and 2.0 amp. So you don't want to go over that, so do not use one for a cell phone. Um, other than that, um, the only other thing I could tell you would be that your zapper gun games and your special controller type games are not going to work because you obviously don't have the special controllers. Uh, you cannot use zapper guns on the flat screen TVs anymore. They just don't work. So none of those games are going to work. There are very few, but there are, you know, you do get the whole entire library of, of games for the platforms I'm including here. Um, and then, you know, the, the zapper games and stuff, you know, they're not going to work, uh, you know. Other than that, um, if you have an issue with a game loading, like it won't it won't load at all, it goes back to the same screen, then what we might have to do, and this is kind of important here, is we might have to change the emulator. So it's, it's very rare, but every once in a while you'll get a game that, that the emulator just doesn't work for. So if that happens, I'm going to show you how to change the emulation. Very simple to do, and just pay attention to me here, and I'll have it, I'll have it fixed for you in just a second. It's going to be very, very simple. So all we're going to do is select the game that we're trying to get to load that won't load. So let's say we're going to try to play Chrono Trigger, and it just won't load. So we're going to press our A button, and as soon as the black screen comes up and a little box appears, press your A button three or four times really quick until that screen jumps up, and when it does, let go of the buttons, and this blue screen will appear. Now when it does, I want you to go down to number two, which is select emulator for ROM, press your A button, and here you usually have a couple or a few different options to choose from. So then just go down and select a different emulator for your ROM. Then if, if that works, then you're in good shape. Now for this case, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. This game works just fine. So I'm going to select that uh, emulator just the same. We're going to go down here to exit without launching. Press your button again. Now you can press into the game. We're going to go with the A button again, and this time the game will boot up just fine, you'll see. Now if it doesn't, you can repeat the process and change to a different emulator, the different emulation for that. And that's the only thing that I know of other than um, other you know major issues I haven't had yet or I'm not aware of. But if you do come across anything, you can bring it to my attention. Just give me a call. Come back in and see me. Uh, you do have a lifetime warranty with them. So if anything ever happens to it or if it quits working or if you're having really bad troubles with it, just bring it back to me. I'll fix or replace it for you. But that's pretty much it as far as the troubleshooting goes. I appreciate it, guys. Have a good day. So after we've played this for three days straight and we've got toothpicks on our eyes to hold them up and we can't play anymore because we've done played every game three or four times and we're ready to go to bed and we got to shut it down because we know we got to go to work. This is what you're going to do. So I don't want you to, I don't want you to unplug the system, just yank the plug out of the wall. You got to think of it like a computer, um, your, your PC at home. Um, you know, you would never just uh, yank the, the plug out of the wall on it. You shut it down, physically shut it down, um, go through a shutdown, uh, you know, s sequence for your computer. This is the same kind of thing. It's not very long. It's not hard to do. It's just I would rather you do that because this is like a little computer itself. So if you treat it good, it'll last a long time. If you treat it rough, it might not last too long. So when you're ready to shut down the device, uh, just get your start menu back up just by pressing your start button it comes up with your main menu and then you're going to go down to quit and press your a button you're going to go down to shut down system press your a button and press your a button again it's going to shut down the system for you um, it's a sequence to shut it down so it, it takes you know maybe 10 seconds for it to shut down all the way you can look at the uh, console itself and see little green flashing light and when they quit flashing and there's no more green light then the system is off and then you can unplug it if you want to um, if you have this on the back of your TV and you shut it down like this and then you shut your TV off, the next time you turn your TV on, it should boot right up. 
with your TV. Uh, it really depends on the make and model of your TV. Some do that way and some don't, so it really just depends. But um, if your TV's on, your USB should be um, admitting a power source, so it should boot the system up. So um, you can just uh, have your system come on and off like that, and it's kind of very easy. You don't have to get up and plug it in and unplug it every time. So that should work good for you guys. Uh, and that should do it. So whenever you're done shutting down, you just finally hit this button right here to shut down the system. And like I say, about 10 seconds and it'll shut itself down. Hi guys, Matt here with Matt's Vintage Video Games. So I just want to thank you guys if you purchased one of these game systems from me. I want you to know that they are absolutely guaranteed for a lifetime. So if you have any kind of problem with it whatsoever, if it ever quits working on you, uh, bring it in to me. I'll fix or replace it for you at no cost. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you watched everything. If you do have any questions, if you get into any trouble or anything like that, please consult the guides that I've provided to you. Those should help you out with troubleshooting any problems that you might have. Uh, if you do have any other issues or anything, like I said, it's guaranteed for a lifetime, so you are more than welcome to bring it back into me, and I'll fix or replace it for you. Thanks again for your purchase, guys. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day.